Okay, ready? One, two, three, up we go. Oh, wow, <laughs> hardly weighs anything. 77 inch TV and it's what, 12 kilos? 27 freedom units? Watch as we're going around this corner here. Being seven millimeters thick does come with uh, some drawbacks. All right, so see back here, you've got uh, the hook there. That goes on these little knobby screws that we've got, the kind of washer things. Okay. It's kind of tough to get it aligned here because you can't, so tight to the wall, you can't really see. Um, I think I'm kind of in the right spot. Just gotta kind of, oh, no, I missed. I'm on. Just go up, yeah, I think you got it. We good? Okay, check this out. So the rest of it just clips on with magnets. So that's it, the W8. This is the best TV LG makes. You should get one, you know. Just uh, 15 grand, 15 grand, yeah. I know, right? It's a good thing LG sent this thing. Ready to fire it up? And we're going to, but not until this message from Mack Weldon. Mack Weldon makes great t-shirts, socks, wallets, and more. They believe in simple shopping, and if you use code TECHTIPS, you'll get 20% off your order at the link below. To get things kicked off, we hooked up our Xbox One and threw in Planet Earth 2 on 4K Blu-ray. As predicted, it is stunning. You got 4K, all sorts of HDR support, pretty much everything that you'd expect for 15 grand to the point that you guys probably aren't even looking at me right now. You're probably looking at that. So then that's it. End of video, right? This TV is great. Uh, well, no, because it has some problems. It's also out of reach for almost all of us. But the good news is you don't actually have to spend that much in order to get the same picture quality. Dropping down 12 inches to the 65 inch model cuts the price more than 50% to a mere seven grand, which okay, is still getting dangerously close to a year of college tuition. But if you don't need the wallpaper thinness, this exact same panel is used across LG's entire OLED lineup. And the only thing that differentiates the various price points is how fancy of a body style you want, except for the very cheapest one, the B8, which uses a lower tier processor. But is that a big deal anyway? Like the other 2018 models, the B8 still has support for Google Assistant and a relatively obscure but appreciated black frame insertion feature to help reduce jutter, which means that all it lacks are the benefits of LG's flagship Alpha 9 processor. It's quad pass image processing to reduce banding, it's AI object recognition to help increase depth and sharpness, and it's frame interpolation technique to simulate 120 hertz refresh rate. Not necessarily things that matter to everyone, though if they matter to you, I mean, it's 200 bucks more to bump up to the Alpha 9 equipped C8. Man, these guys love their letters and numbers, don't they? Speaking of an extra $200, if you're a real stickler for accurate color, then be prepared to shell out some more to have your screen professionally calibrated because out of the box, even with the Technicolor expert mode turned on, our particular panel didn't have great color accuracy, particularly with the primary pigments, cyan, magenta, and yellow. It's actually quite a bit worse than what we measured on LG's own $2,400 LCD TV just a couple of weeks ago. We're not saying it's terrible. I mean, the average Best Buy shopper would notice. But it's pretty bothersome to me that at this price, you still need to toss an extra 250 bucks to Geek Squad to get it calibrated. Now the good news is that we measured almost 94% coverage of the DCI P3 color space. So exceptional color reproduction is achievable on these TVs. Now comparing the W8 to Samsung's Q9F, the nicest TV that they make, you can see that they're both amazing displays. But even with full array local dimming, the quantum dot LCD display just cannot achieve the sharp contrast of an OLED. Check out the halo around the white letters. 
But when you make a super high-end product, you inevitably open yourself up to some scrutiny. And there are still some gripes, some of which were present in the W7 and still persist with this year's model mostly having to do with the TV's mandatory soundbar. The reason this TV is so thin, other than the fact that it's OLED and therefore it doesn't have a fat backlight shining through the pixels, is because the TV's drive circuitry, power supply, and I.O. are not housed in the main chassis, but are instead contained in this 28-pound Dolby Atmos soundbar. Now, to be clear, it's a pretty awesome soundbar. It's 4.2 channel and 60 watts, so it goes pretty loud and usually manages to sound clear at high volumes, unless you're listening to metal or something. And the way the speakers emerge and then hide when you turn the TV off is really slick. But if you're the type of person who spends $15,000 on a TV, we don't think it's that much of a stretch to say that you probably have a better audio solution than what they're including here. A fact that is demonstrated by the number of wallpaper TV owners who have opted to hide their soundbars under a table or in a wall behind the screen. Wouldn't it be easier, more aesthetic, and even cheaper for everyone involved if LG simply offered a more compact variant that didn't include any speakers at all? I mean, it's the kind of thing that's so obvious that it makes you kind of mad because it's like, it feels like they're saying, Hey, I mean, these high-end clients are already paying so much, what's an extra few hundred bucks to cover the cost of the soundbar? Not to mention the shipping. But even if they do make the soundbar easier to hide, the umbilical cord is still kind of a drag, even though it is relatively discreet and includes an extension. It's just not nearly as flexible as Samsung's One Connect solution, and it doesn't have the requisite fire rating to be run inside a wall. So depending on your local laws, you might need one of these sold separately in wall cable kits. And finally, what about OLED's arch nemeses? Not being as bright as Quantum Dot and Burnin. Well, it's still not as bright, but I think we're far past the point where we left off with Plasma, where they were considered only suitable for use in a dimmed room. I personally didn't find that it was an issue with the W8 at all. As for Burnin, while mitigation strategies like screen shift, which moves the whole picture over a few pixels periodically, the automatic screensaver, and the pixel refresher routines that run to help prevent image retention exist, burn-in continues to be an issue on modern OLEDs. One that will especially affect people like gamers, which is kind of why we didn't really mention its awful input lag, and my grandma, who leaves local news and the weather channel on 24 hours a day. I mean, I've been using mine for two years and I haven't experienced it yet. So there's no doubt in my mind that with proper care, which by the way for me includes nagging my wife and kids to make sure that they have YouTube and Netflix in full screen mode, so I don't end up with a stupid Windows start icon in the bottom left, LG's 2018 lineup of OLEDs will drop the jaw of pretty much anyone within iShot for years to come. Though that doesn't mean that you should necessarily buy this particular one. I mean, if you got a billion dollars in the bank, yeah, duh, why not? Buy, buy nine, you know? Buy some Quadro GPUs and run the whole thing as a giant video wall, who cares? It's one of the coolest TVs on the planet. But if I was a more normal person, I would first make sure that I have a secondary display for those extra innings ball games. Then I'd probably look elsewhere in LG's OLED lineup. Or if virtual assistant integration and fancy processing aren't significant value adds for you, then a discounted W7 from last year might also be a good bet since the panel quality will be identical. FreshBooks is the small business accounting software custom built for how you wanna work. It's a simple way to be more productive, more organized, and get paid faster. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks to get paid up to four days faster. And you can take the entire experience with you on the road with their iOS and Android apps. One of the coolest things you can do with FreshBooks is you can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games. So if you're a freelancer or a small business owner, try out FreshBooks for free for 30 days by going to freshbooks.com slash tech tips. Just enter Linus Tech Tips in the How Did You Hear About Us section. We're gonna have that linked down below.
So thanks for watching, guys. If you just liked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out the product that we featured at the link in the video description. Pick yourself up a W8. Or we should probably link the other OLEDs too, just because those are the ones we think make more sense, right? Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like, uh, oh, I'm not wearing one, but that's okay. Cool shirts and our community forum, which you should totally join. Why do you still have that shirt? This shirt is f***ing awesome. It's, uh, it's a unique item, you know? It's deprecated? <laughs>